Sraddha, uh, Sraddha uh, ask them to join immediately, rest of the students. Okay, sir. Yeah, please, put them in, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, right. Uh, good morning, students. Uh, so I think, uh, yeah, it's almost joined. And uh, the remaining students, they can join as soon as they are in range. Okay. Okay. So in the last class, uh, we, di we discussed, you know, horizontal measurement of distance. And there are, uh, you know, principles okay? and uh, classifications. Let me show you this and yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, Chiranjeevi, there any? Can you see the slide now? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, all right, uh, yeah, so the fundamental things we discuss so far, what is the fundamental things and principles, classification of serving, measurements, units, topo sheet, uh, you know, uh, identification of topo sheet features, okay, and how to read the topo sheets, what are the features are there in the topo sheet, who they are survived, how they are survived, what are the you know, methods they you know, adopted for uh, you know, to do the you know, survey of you know, the land or it may be in the surface features of the earth. Right, so fundamentals, uh, let, let, us, let us recap this because it's uh, new to this, you guys and uh, let me uh, you know, refresh those things. Um, there are two basic, you know, basic principles of surveying. So always work from the whole to the other part, okay? And to, that's a surveying in, that's, you know, the principle is that to locate a new station by at least two measurements, linear or angular, from the fixed reference. Fixed reference in the sense, you need the benchmark, you need the known points. So or always you think that when you're going for survey, should remember that where is the nearest point for your particular area of interest when where we are going to survey it you must remember it or you must you know get it from the any government organization or it may be in the uh, you know the customer where you are going to survey it 
either it may be private or it may be the um, government private. Okay. From the known points, you are going to locate unknown points. And unknown area, you are going to survey. That is a very simple principle. To locate a new station, new point, by at least two measurements. One is angular, that's called the angles or bearings. And another one is called linear one, by horizontal you know, distance measurement. From fixed reference point, fixed in the sense is a benchmark. It is not disturbed. It should not be disturbed. If it is a disturbed, again, you have to establish there or from that point to another point. Fixed point or benchmark is nothing but that is your you know, reference point for your future survey. Anybody comes there, they will start with the known points, okay, which is near to your uh, you know, uh, area of interest. Okay? So if the benchmark is somewhere in the 10 kilometer, you don't know that another benchmark is near to the one kilometer. If you're, you know, uh, it's near to your survey area, why you are traversing from 10 kilometer? Why don't you, you know, identify nearest one? All right, those things are there. All right, and uh, yeah. Mm. Can you hear my voice? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. You can see the slide now. Yes, this is the basic fundamentals. Eh? Uh, according to the first principle, the whole survey area is the first enclosed by two stations, main stations. That's a control points for your any survey areas. And main survey lines, OK? And the area is, is divided into number of divisions. I told you that in a number of uh, different you know, the shapes well-conditioned triangles or it may be a rectangle okay or it may be a closed polygon anything you can do it otherwise you will not get the control there okay better you make it divide that the entire you know 10 acre of land you can divide by you know um, what you call this uh, by grid any into 10 by 10 meter grid or 100 meter by 100 meter grid it's up to you okay and this is how they you know they're making the grid for that okay from the no stations and uh, yeah the fundamentals uh, the fundamental principle of surveying okay this we discussed there okay uh, the main survey lines are measured by very accurately with the precise survey instruments and uh, yeah and the remaining sides of the triangles are measured the purpose of this method of working is to control accumulation of errors Accuracy is most important to avoid the you know, uh, errors, accumulation of continuous errors. During the measurement, okay, if there any error has happened, then it will not affect any whole work. So wherever you get the error, if you notice it, immediately you, you know, rectify it there only. Don't carry out for you know, up to the end of the day. Okay? And that is the thing. And uh, yeah. This is you know, linear angulars, and this we all discussed there. Okay, right. And uh, yes, taking it to angular measurements, A and B as an angles, that's called an angle of CAB or ABC. Okay, those things, angular measurements. This is sort of fundamentals of you know, surveying principle. These two are your known stations or you know, control points. From there, you are going to establish the C in between the AB, AC, or BC. You need to establish the other point if it is a not visible of third point. That's called your intermediate points. 
and d1 d2 as the distance okay if the a to c c point is visible you can establish from a to c from c to b you can connect it or you can uh, establish the intermediate point if the b station is not visible that is a specific thing this angular and this is a perpendicular to that as as per your requirement you can you can start with the surveying this is a triangle one and this is another one angular one this is a theta one is a it's called your angles okay this is how the things we are you know uh, conducting the surveys okay and types of surveys we discussed there survey can be classified in various stages categories depends on the methods of use and nature of fields okay and also classification based on the instruments different instruments we are using for different purpose okay because each instrument have their own limitations okay say for example chain survey this is simplest type of you know surveying in which only linear methods only the uh, you know the what we call this uh, uh, you know horizontal you know linear the straight line you can measure it from the tape or survey you know chain survey both are same okay in a chain there is no measurement there stays one chain is a three feet like this and tape is you, everything is readable there okay and angular measurement are not taken you cannot take the angular measurement for angular measurement you have to go with a compass okay and this is chain surveys here you can see this okay start from here and end with here start from here and end with here and these are the distance okay right and uh, this is an angle so you need the bearings here and for this it's a straight line you can easily do it the survey for the you know curved lines you need to take the bearings and this is completely you know uh, one straight angle straight lines you can easily do the survey this one you need to take care with the one compass compass with a chain compass with a tape survey okay because you need to take the bearings right it's going to the towards northeast then it's coming to straight line a little bit and it comes to the again northeast part this is a north always and is a west northwest start with the northeast and turning and north west okay this is the one compass survey we discussed there in compass survey the angles are measured with the help of magnetic compass okay there is a slightly different you know difference in the angles of magnetic and true north that we need to determine there itself only chain and compass survey linear measurements are made with the chains and tape angular measurement taken by the compass it's a very simple and olden is if they were using still we are using there we are not going to deploy the instruments this is how the compass we discussed there okay right right so these are the main parts we discussed there from that right from the compass how when you draw when you when you do the survey you start with the you know uh, you know starting point somewhere here 47.0 db or you can start from here so when you see the direction you can easily identify from where they started and where they end okay start with the a point and end with the z points this is a compass survey okay from a to b is bearing is 47 45 degree 7 minutes 47.7 meter is 67 bearing we are taken from the compass and uh, uh, the horizontal measurement we are taking from the tape or from the chain okay which one is convenient you can use it by handling chain you know chain is a little bit heavy uh, better use it the tape survey okay that's the best one you start from here okay and it's a known points or you can you know or you can start with the you know unknown points also and you can mark it you can connect with the known points for this part from here you can take the 47 degree angle so here it is this is a 90 degree okay say north degree here north grids that means it's a north okay from north it is a 90 here so here it's a 45 degree 45 degree and 45 here 45 degree here and you are going to establish the b point from a to b 
it's a distance is 61 degree sorry 61 kilo, 61 meter 61.5 meters how you are going to measure it by measuring the tape by measuring with a you know chain okay so the next one is the from b to c again you ship the you, know, you travel from here to here a to b and you stand here and you you want to take the you know c point this is again little bit let's say degrees 22 and it's coming here 58 and like this you are going to distribute this okay these are all the you know that's called your c is the intermediate you know the central point okay from here again you are going to continue that this is you know table of survey data this is how a to b b to c c to d and e to d to e and e to f and f to z this is a compass survey it's a very simple one okay and the plane table survey we discussed there it is a graphical method of surveying in which field works and plotting were both done in simultaneously uh, yes in the ground itself in the field itself you have to do the you know survey as well as the plotting to part so this compass survey you can do it in the later also you can take that measurement put it in the you know you know write down in your you know um, what you call in a log book okay or level books and you can plot it at home but this is not like this plain table survey you have to establish there and you have to do the survey and plot it there only otherwise you cannot get the you know uh, you know the things are in you know, a better in the you know you know um, camp okay theodolite survey it's a survey the horizontal angles are measured with you know theodolite survey the precisely and then the compass a little bit later still you know the you know you know latest technology like this better than compass you can go with the theodolite survey theodolite survey is the horizontal angles are measured with the theodolite more precisely than a compass and also we can do the linear measurements with the tape and service only theodolite gives you you know uh, right the angles but the the linear measurement you have to make with the compass sorry the chain or tape yeah this is how the things this is what theodolite instruments. Okay, this is a plumb knob, but we are going to you know fix this uh, center point and leveling this. And uh, this is what where we are going to take the direction. And it's uh, bubbling uh, to make the you know leveling of this you know table. Okay, and this is you know um, the equipment we use to you know make the you know the plumb knob in the proper positions. Yeah, this is how you know we are going to fix this upper arm. That's what we hear. This is an arm. This is a plumb knob, right? And uh, here you can see this. You can fix the you know, plumb knob here and down below and make the centering. Okay, this is a lower arm. This is an upper arm. Plumbing fork and plumb bob. Okay, plumb fork and plumb knob. We are going to fix it like this. So to make the you know centering point. This is your station or location for that. Okay, this is how you know plane table survey. When you do it, you'll get the drawings like this. And these are all the check lines. After surveying, you need to do the check lines. Okay, A, B, C, D, E. Okay, right. These are all the you know the plane table surveying instruments. When you start with here, establish this one, establish this one, and these are all the known points. Uh, sorry, it's not alone known points. It's a winter visible, intervisible stations. Okay, right. Oh, this is the theodolite that we have seen in this instrument. Okay, this uh, you know vertical angles in the vertical circles. So this is how the things. Okay, and uh, tachymetry. It's a special type of theodolite. It's also theodolite. It's a special type known as a tachymeter. Is using to determine the horizontal and vertical distance. Okay, horizontal and vertical distance and the other one is the leveling survey and uh, it's used to determine the vertical distance that's called your elevations and relative height of points with the help of instruments okay and this is how the things take a meter okay from this point you can establish these things and with the triangles all right this is i know uh, view of transit from this point you are going to establish this okay all right 
and this is called your you know, angles x and uh, this is an undulating topography okay this is a horizontal distance and where you are <coughs> the point of you know instruments okay and this is actually the height of the instruments from the ground to the you know top of the instruments this is the height of the instruments and uh, this is you know the uh, actual you know height of the instruments with the level ground and you need to you know take the survey for this areas rl okay for this you are going to focus it and this is your you know staff ranging rod okay for ranging rod you are going to focus it then you are going to take the you know what you call this um, staff readings okay you cannot take it here because if there is you know upside it's the slope is there and you cannot take it that's why you have to you have to focus it on the you know extend your you know uh, what you call the, the you know measurement uh, that's uh, your uh, the staff rise it and focus it on that okay and this is called a vertical you know component and it's the total height of that right yeah leveling this is what how we are going to do the leveling in the base sites areas the, this is i told you that this is a benchmark 913 meter and this, uh, from there you are going to establish the rest of the points okay and the back side reading four side reading if this is your instruments areas this is your four side front side and back side readings okay this is how the you know, benchmark from the benchmark you are going to establish the station A and from the station B. So, here <coughs> this is called your instrument height. HI means height of the instrument 2.45 meters. Okay, that's size. Nice. And from here, you are going to this is a temporary point. Huh? This is a temporary point. You establish here, then you go with the another point. This is a leveling survey to determine the levels. And uh, it's called a photogrammetric uh, surveying. It is science of taking the measurement with the help of photographs taken by the aerial cameras from the aircraft or from the drone. And the next one is the EDM survey. That's called electromagnetic, sorry, ele electronic distance measurement survey. In this type of survey, all the measurements, okay, uh, may be a length or it may be angles or it may be coordinates are made with the help of EDMs. That's called your total stations. This is how that, you know, all this uh, photogrammetric surveys. So, uh, photogrammetric surveys, uh, we are taking from the top of the weave, or, uh, you know, this is airborne, you know, aircraft, or this is with the, your satellites, right? And it can cover this area by, say, depends on your camera, camera quality, okay? The camera quality is very poor and it's difficult to get the very good quality of the images okay and if the camera quality is very nice so high powerful cameras definitely it will get you know even if you stress the images it will not get coming into the picture i mean the pixel levels okay right right and uh, this is i know Yes, uh, this is a uh, you know, photogrammetric uh, survey, and uh, it's a you know, photo photogrammetric uh, you know, survey. It's nothing but you shooting the you know the or capturing the images, capturing the features of the or capturing the you know the objects 
from the remote place. Photogrammetry is nothing but it's a remote sensing. It's a remote sensing. Okay. That is called your EDM, electronic distance measurement. Through electronic, through pausing the light, through pausing the media of uh, you know light and capture the image properties. That's called your photogrammetric. That's called your remote sensing. Whatever we are, you know, uh, launch of satellites to the space. So each, you know, satellites maybe have multi-purpose. Some are have the single purpose. Single, you know, like, you know, some are having the, you know, weather forecasting, meteorological data collections. Some are for, you know, military purpose, defense purpose. Some are for uh, some satellites we launch for the, you know, agriculture, irrigation, forest. Okay. Some are for mineral explorations and mining. Some are for town planning. Okay. And with the same satellites, we are using the different, uh, you know, the images for different, you know, uh, sectors. Okay. This is how, uh, you know, the image or the features are capturing from the aircraft. Okay. This is for the different, you know, layers that will come to the later, you know, later stage. This is, you know, Earth where you are going to capture this, you know, the area and it, how it looks this. It may be, you know, 25 kilometer by 25 kilometer or 20 kilometer by 20. It depends on the, you know, the quality of the cameras. Some are for the, you know, elevation model. Some are for agriculture. Some are for the town planning. Okay, those things. Yeah, let's come to the you know, EDM. What is that EDM means that we discussed just now? Electronic distance measurement. That's a ground-based one. But this one is air -borne. But here also, it's the latest one. What we are using, what the you know, private companies, even in government sector, also using the electronic distance measurement. And this instrument, generally, we use it for peak survey. Quick in the sense, you know, if you take the you know, theodolite or temple level, it takes time. And you have to measure with the tape. You have to measure with the uh, chain for the you know, linear measurement. Okay? For angles, you have to fix the you know, compass and take the bearings. That takes time. But EDM, that's a total session survey. It gives you the, you know, inbuilt of all the, you know, the linear angulment, you know, angular measurement. Okay, so fixing at one place, at you know you can you know focus for you know more than a kilometer, and also more than a kilometer you can fix it. But uh, you know when it comes to the obstacles, when it comes to the you know thick forest, it is very difficult. So it's very difficult to you know focus. It needs the focus. It needs the clear sight. Then only you can do it. And this is, you know, uh, instruments. It's a target site that's called here in thin one target site. Uh, okay. And it is uh, like your, you know, the pistol or, you know, gun. There will be target fixing through the eye. This is a one. And this is an object lens. You are going to make, you know, zooming, zoom out and zoom in. Okay. This is an objective lens, a magnifying lens. And uh, this is called a horizontal clamp knob. Horizontal clamp knob. This one. Okay. Horizontal tangent screws. Horizontal tangent screws. Okay. Then this is called a display window. And this is called the operating keys. Just like your, you know, keyboard. Just like your, you know, calculator. Okay. And these are all uh, what you call the level screws. Leveling of screws, those things, and uh, to fix on the tripod here, tripod base point. This is a tripod base point, okay. And in between, there is a center, the space, uh, where they are going to fix the you know, uh, net or a bolt, you know, uh, you know, to fix with the you know the tripod. Okay, this is an optical uh, you know plummet. Okay, to fix it, instrument center. Uh, mark okay it should be in the proper uh, leveling okay 
So when it comes to the, you know, the electronic distance measurement, just to imagine that. So far we discuss only the ground measurements and that also with a physical one, measuring the horizontal distance, vertical distance, with all the tapes. This is not like this. You go there, one man should be there for, you know, withholding the, you know, the prism somewhere here to focus. That's all. From here you can focus uh, to the prism and get the readings. That is with the physics. It is, you know, the mode of the working with, you know, instruments called a physics one. Okay. And then, right, with fixing that, you know, the, you know, the total session here, and you can focus, you know, more than a kilometer, more than a two or five kilometer, and up to the top of this hill. But the prism holding person should be there on top of the hill. That is a big, you know, the difficult task for them. Okay, he has to, he can stand here at one place and the, the, those who are holding the you know, prism, they have to traverse, they have to move all around the survey areas. Okay, this is called a total sessions, which we are doing that. And uh, yeah, triangulation we discussed there. So, and triangulation adoption things and traversing. Okay, right. So this is all about the, you know, the recap of complete surveys, complete survey of this. Let me show you some of the, you know, the images which are very useful for your uh, uh, satellite imageries. So how they are catching, how you are going to use this satellite imageries. Uh, what we are using here. Let me give me time for that so that I can show you some of the know. So one type of surveys, I uh, can introduce you to a more session now. Let me, let me show you some of the, you know, things called. Any, uh, QGA, yes. Yeah, this will give you the, you know, broad area of how the, you know, ATM, no, 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 no. Analysis. Misclassifications. Yeah, database. This project. This data. Let me let me give, give me some time so that yeah, it's here. This is not the one. Oh, this is already the processor data which we don't want here. Yes. Or the data. 
Better than this quality is theorem that us is now, yeah, all right. Now, yeah, so these are all I know the. STRM data and the satellite imagery is taken from the aircraft or the you know what you call your uh, satellites, which we use it for different purpose. Yeah, land settlements. Yes, uh, this is I know the imagery, uh, land set imagery, which we are you know uh, we got it from the you know satellites and uh, it's for the watershed management. Generally, we use it for watershed management. Uh, say I told you that or the you know the when you are going to survey for the what you call your um, the dam surveys and all, and generally we use the latest technologies for uh, you know to do the any area calculations and watershed management. And this is uh, you know I think yeah Almaty Almaty Dam in northern part of Karnataka. Okay, I think uh, yeah uh, this is you know the river flowing towards northeast. Okay, and this is uh, the hilly areas, and these are the main streams. Okay, and these are the you know the top hills, and this is a open scrap land, and these are the water bodies. Okay, and uh, yeah, and this is called your uh, Tumbadra Tumbadra River uh, in Hospet area and Hospet. It's down below this Hospet. Hospital areas, and where you can see, the, you know, this is Tumbadra Dam. Okay, and uh, yes, uh, this is, you know, backwater areas. Okay, and this uh, this is the latest image. When we discussed in the last uh, class, it was, you know, the topo sheet survey. So, report a topo sheet survey and uh, topographical surveys and, uh, topo you know, the that is, you know, with the old data. That means in 1970s and 1980s, it may be updated. That is, that is the one. But this data is the latest and recent one in 2008, in 2009. Okay, and uh, you can see this. This, you know, the water bodies, the where they are. You know, there are many water bodies. You can see this, the blue color, and these are catchment areas. Okay. If you are uh, really interested to work on GIS in remote sensing, and there are many sectors, there are many, you know, the organizations are there where you are going to get the internship as well as, you know, project work. I can do it with, you know, this is a you know, totally different world. GIS and remote sensing by sitting at one place and you can work, you know, for the, you know, different companies in the different, you know, for the different countries. This is how, you know, remotely. Uh, you know, uh, you can work it because I would say it's a remotely collected uh, data and uh, gathering the data and you can sit at one place at your home. You can work for the anyway part of the world. Let's work from home and work from remotely. This is how the things we have the imageries, we have the software and you can work for that. There are, there are a number of opportunities for particularly in GIS and remote sensing. Right, and this is how the things uh, which we are, you know, dam. And next to that, you can see this. This is a mining area, yes. prospective to mining. And this is, you know, Sandur area here, Hospet is here, and Balari somewhere here. And somewhere this is a Toranagalu, where there is a Jindal steel plant is, is there right now. And this is called your mining areas, it's just like, you know, 
horseshoe areas horseshoe leg of the you know horse there will be you know the bottom we are fixing the you know for called shoes horseshoe bed for this okay and down below it goes to the you know, amravati down the raichur and it goes to the you know next stage and this is another one how we can see this okay i can do all types of surveys here you can do the measurements you can do the you know volume calculation you can do the you know total area calculations how much you know water bodies areas how much is the rocky areas how much is the forest land okay how much is the settlement here this is you know the you know digital uh, you know that survey you know you know uh, you know in when you when you take the you know uh, total session when you see when you survey with the campus and uh, tape survey and the chain survey you feel that better than uh, the you know theodolite is better than those methods so when it comes to the you know total session oh it is better than the other two surveys theodolite and the compass and the chain surveys when it comes to the remote sensing data when you know capturing the image from the satellites and you are procuring and you are working with the remote like you are calculating the areas without you know at first of course you have to you have to have the ground truth you have to have the ground truth so once you survey once you do we done the you know you know the digital images you have to have the ground verification you go back to the ground and at least you have some ground truth verifications then only it is a valid for this uh, whatever you are doing the remotely data remote control data okay and this is how the things yeah this is called your you know land use land cover facilities with the different colors okay yeah here also you can see the clearly one the red color indicates uh, this is actually another uh, what you call this um, actual color true color and this is called your false color fcc false composite colors red blue green these are the three primary colors which are combined with the processing the data can generate so this red color indicates the greeneries maybe a forest maybe a grassland maybe you know agriculture land anything can be so this is called over you know the water bodies and the rivers you can see like this and this is a barren land i would say it is in you know, the top of the hills okay yes this is completely processed data yeah this is another one uh, data called uh, yeah global land cover data land use and land cover data with the different processing we can see this in some uh, imageries you have the some features are very clear depends on uh, the filtrations right yes this is uh, generally we use it for the you know watershed analysis you can see there you know easily you can see there you know uh, what you call the drainages okay and many streams are joining here yeah you can see there you know the hill and valley is there in the lighting topography and here you can see this very clear cut high resolution data this is small check dams another check dams here and this in you know, a small water bodies yeah now it's coming to the picture so what i said is the resolution when you take the cap when you when you take the you know picture from the you know aircraft or maybe a or drone survey the picture size so 2 meter by 2 meter the clear cut the object should be visible even if you zoom in proper see here now right this is a maximum you can that within that you have to get the you know the clear cut image this is a town and these are the roads okay this is you know <coughs> just 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 you need to understand the things very clearly Yes, this is must be the canal. <coughs> yes. Yeah. Hmm. Fantastic landscapes. See this. After the almond tree. Yeah.
Yes, uh, these are all called enhanced thematic mappers with the different filters. They use the things. And uh, these are all the multispectral uh, scanner data, multispectrals with the different, you know, resolutions, different uh, spectral uh, uh, radiometric glitters, multispectral, you know, sensors. We captured the images, same areas. Here you can see this. So better than that. Better than that. Right. I told you that each image have the you know different quality and different objects is capturing that. So enhanced thematic mapper and multispectral schemes. This is uh, also involved in your survey. Okay. So you understand that <coughs> I think you understand the you know. What is I know the fundamentals of survey, classification of survey, and latest technology survey. Now in the next class we'll go with some uh, simple problems and uh, we'll solve it. How the problems are going on, and uh, yeah. Uh, Bharat Singh, there is a there is a there is a quick uh, you know the quiz for a few questions for this uh, related to this section. Uh, if you want to survey for uh, the broad area called, you know, um, 10 kilometer by 10 kilometer areas. Which survey, which, you know, mode of service, the best one and uh, quick one? Anybody can answer for this. Dharani, Chiranjeevi? Your 10 kilometer by 10 kilometer. I want the area is very quick way. Okay. If you have the, you know, yes, I would say it's a, there are two types again now. I would say it's a, see, I can give the you know, total sessions. You can do it very fast. Then the Teodolite and the Compass and the Chain Survey, right? So other than this, other than the, you know, ground survey, there is a aerial survey data images. Aerial survey. Data. Yeah, photogrammetry or satellite imageries, whatever you have the satellite imageries. See, again, you, you know, in the, Photogrammetry, you have to take, you know, imageries from the top of that, okay? And uh, either may be a drone survey or it may be aircraft survey, right? So <clears throat> that is a survey one. So I would, I can, I can give the other one, I can give the satellite imageries, which is already, you know, captured from the aircraft or maybe the drone or it may be from the satellites. I can give, produce it. Simply sitting at the, you know, the front of the, you know, the systems, and you can digitize the areas. You can get the volume. You can get the area. But you, you must have the data. The fastest one is the aircraft survey, photogrammetry. That is the best one. If the area is very big, so the aerial survey is the best one. OK? Right. And uh, the next question is that in theater light, what are the measurements we can do that? Angular and vertical distance. Both we can do that with the theodolite. For the station survey, you can do the angles, bearings, horizontal and vertical, linear, everything you can do this. Right? So you got the what is the basic fundamentals, principles, and also the classifications, units, how to read the topography maps, topographical maps, what are the features are there. Okay, you are all familiar with the, you know, the survey part now. Now we are going to discuss in the next class, solve some problems which are related to your survey. Okay, okay, this is how the things. You have any questions? Are there any, Dasharat? No, sir. Yeah, so what I will do now, yeah.